Hey everyone, it's John Isaias, and uh, I was just getting ready to, um, I'm putting in a new C drive, and I'm going to install Windows 11 from scratch, and I was telling Isaias, because because the C drive is my NVMe drive, it's not easy to just swap out and have a backup or, you know, access stuff if I, you know, forget something, and I thought, hey, you know what, for 30 years, I've, we've all probably done this like, hey, I'm going to reformat this. And then you go, oh, crap, I should have done I, X. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, years and years ago, things like even your bookmarks and things, like when Chrome, before Chrome, right, IE had and Firefox had local bookmarked files and things like that sucked. But you're yeah. um, so <laughs> thankfully Chrome and even Office and stuff has started to, to do stuff in the cloud. So it gets rid of some of the headache. But. I was just making a checklist to, so you know of my thought process of what I do, and I wanted to bounce it off of Isaiah's as well and get his thoughts also of like, hey, remember to do this. So yeah, okay. what I had started doing was looking through, like I looked at my, I don't really use my documents. I put all of that under Dropbox, which is on a whole different. Um, I was going to say something uh, like that, like everything that has to do with documents, personal videos and picture, all of that. I usually keep them on a separate drive from where Windows is installed. So in case I have to reinstall or actually do anything that has to do with Windows, I don't lose my files. That's something yeah. that, yeah, that's the first See, thing. I, I, I don't do. technically have them on a different drive, but they're under Dropbox. Um, yeah, that's, so. that's good. And and I, I noticed that actually on Windows 10, I think it was, is the first time that I noticed. If you do a Windows reinstall it like on the same drive, yeah. It asks you if yeah, you want sure. to keep your right. personal folders. And that is because before, prior to Windows, yeah. I guess Windows 7 or something like that, Windows 8, prior to that, whenever you reinstalled Windows, like all your freaking files were gone. And they yeah. started kind of like separating them a little bit. Yeah. So you can have them on the same drive. But if you want to just reinstall Windows, it was possible. It is possible. But even like that, I usually keep them on a totally separate drive just in case I have to wipe out the the c drive i am sure i don't have to look for documents or videos or pictures i can format the whole drive and i know like there's nothing there i always know there's nothing there yeah and and which also led me to hey some programs like outlook you you store your data in like a pst or an ost file but those aren't necessarily in a spot that's backed up or something you think about and often that's on the c drive and like i one time forever ago, lost all of my emails. And I was so not happy. <laughs> but it's it's like, hey, what are programs that do stuff like that, right? Like to understand some things. And also, I Googled it just because because I, I have like 10 email addresses my Outlook's checking. And it's really annoying to set that up. So I Googled it and I found a thing in the registry to say, hey, grab, export this registry key and everything beneath it and it has you know your outlook configuration your accounts um and that's I'll that's one of that. the other interesting things that you can actually kind of like um as soon as you do this you become kind of like a super user is starting to figure out how programs save their configurations usually on the registry and just backing that up and put it on the nano computer and then you don't have to think about it right yeah so it's a little bit tricky because you have to be very careful with the registry. But as soon as you start messing with that and successfully doing those kind of things, then you're considered a power user, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I also, just because it, and it's been, I don't know, um, six years or so since I've wiped Windows, like mm -hmm. I, I've had this instance for a long time. I forget what programs I even have installed. So I went through several places of my start menu, my program files, you know, both the 32 and 64 bit locations to, to spot check and go, oh, you know what? I, I want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to want to reinstall that because I just like getting it all done up front, you know, and getting it, getting my PC all set. To I, go. Will, I will show you something once you finish with this screen. I will show you what I do for that. <laughs> Um, and, and maybe it's what I also I did, but I, I went through. Here's my list of of stuff that I go grab. But um, and then and then start what I like to do. Also, I did a search for recently create like in the last three months, just to mm. say what files were created in the last three months. It is a really long list. I didn't actually look at the files. I looked at the directories 
and said, oh, okay, it looks like I did some stuff in here and it helped me pick up a couple of things I, I should have grabbed. Um, and then I work, ironically, I work in the temp files. I actually do live testing in there. And okay. there were a couple of files there that I, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Yeah, there's a few temporary files that uh, might be important for you, but it depends. Um, most of the people that I know don't do that. But yes, a lot of times temporal files might contain things that you are interested in. It's a good check to do. Now, I, I was just going to say, this one is not really related to you. Uh-huh. But 99% of the times when I'm reinstalling Windows, I keep a live USB. There are some, you can create a either a Windows environment on a, CD, on a USB or a Linux environment that if your computer, for whatever reason, you mess up the installation, you did something and you cannot boot, you can plug your USB enter into that live environment and you can still extract things from your computer or format this the drive and then try again that is a, is a very simple thing but i haven't seen many people do it until their computer doesn't boot like for example what happened like in your case your computer didn't boot um, and then you had to start, okay, let me see what I'm going to do. In my case, every time I'm going to do something that I think that my computer might not boot, I just create a live CD. There's a, I saw, you see, I was going to tell you which tool to use to do that. There's a tool called Rufus. It's a very yeah, old tool, it's a right? So, so, so Rufus is a very old tool that allows you to grab an ISO file, like ISO, yep. and put it on a, C, on a USB and make it bootable so that you could boot any environment, either the Windows installation or, for example, what I, what I do, a Linux installation um, that I could just plug in and start up to make sure that if, like, for example, what you had to do, it was just a registry thing that you have to check, well, your computer didn't boot at all. Yeah, how can I fix that? Yeah. You might, in, in my case, I would boot with a live CD and then reflash the BIOS and I'm good to go. Like I didn't, I wouldn't have to open my computer at all. I could have done it with a USB, but it's good to know, you know, you could, you, you should have something of a backup environment that if your computer doesn't start, you just plug it in and you're good to go. Which is another really good point to bring up in this video is I happen to be completely swapping out NVMe I want to say drive, but it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a drive. Yeah. But I'm not destroying my old version is my right. main point. So the, it's, it's both a benefit and a curse in this case, because it's a benefit. Cause I don't have to worry. Well, if I really did forget something, I can go put it back in reboot into the old configuration, grab them, go do it. But it's annoying. Cause it's actually uh, uh you know, screwed in part that you stick in and attach it and stuff. And I can only have one. So <laughs> I, um, I can't, I, it's good, but at the same time, if you aren't doing that, if you are more was what I think is Ace is describing more is often we're formatting our drive. Yeah. You're, you're starting from scratch or you're uh, playing with something. Let me see what happens, which is something that I'm going to be doing soon. Like, I don't know how to, it, it, my computer is not set up to update to windows 11. There's some, yeah, things, right, some right. bypasses. There's right. some bypasses that you can set. Yeah. I'm going to mess with the registry. Once I do that, I don't know if my computer is going to boot. How do I do that? Like I, I told you, I'm going to try on a virtual machine first. Yeah. Then I'm going to try it on mine. But before trying it on mine, I'm going to have a USB that is going to be there in case I mess up something, you know? And that was what for me, because I'm swapping out those drives, I wasn't as concerned because I, I like oh, you. Exactly, because you have your drive there. Yeah. <laughs> but um. What I did do was those key things that we have to do in order to get our um, basically hack the Windows 11 install, right? To yeah. say, don't look for these things and, and up mm -hmm. in the registry. Um, I sent myself that on Telegram. So the the main point is, unless like I also have another laptop, which I was going to make sure is up and running, yeah, so I can I, I can do it if yeah. I have to. Um, but having a a plan B, having a way you can still search the internet while yeah. doing this. Yes. Because 
is it, is it we didn't actually say it but like earlier this week i had read something where i was using a handbrake and it was it would crap my computer would crash and i had read oh it's this bios setting probably go change this in the bios and it's just a setting so i went in and made the tweak and i went to reboot and it and not only would it not boot i couldn't get into the bios like it was it it never it was like crazy and i was ready to cry i was like oh my god like what you know this is going to be annoying we're talking with Isaiah. So I'm like, why don't I just unplug the the battery, the battery and the battery. let it ring, and then it, it reset. Thank God, because that would have. Yeah, I know we could have figured it out, but I was like, oh mercy. That that's it, one of those that I just plug yeah. the thing. I plug my environment and flush the BIOS into yeah. the, the default state without yeah. me having to open the computer. But yeah, yeah. Um, having a second, you know, a plan B, right? Yeah, it is interesting. Quick thing, it is funny. I, I have this issue that if you use WhatsApp or other apps, for example, and you disconnect WhatsApp, you kind of like lose your messages. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like for example, for example, if I have WhatsApp on my phone and I'm not backing up automatically, that's the quick, right. that, that's the key thing. Right. You right. have to set up a backup that it goes automatically and you connect your computer. And now on your computer, you type something and send it over. But this thing didn't back up that message. If you disconnect, your computer is done, you don't have internet, and that message is never is not going to be found anywhere. The cool thing with Telegram is all messages yeah. are stored yeah. on an online server that it doesn't matter where you are. Right. If you lost access from your computer, you go to another computer login and you will see all your messages there. And they have a section that is called saved messages that... I keep a bunch of very important messages in there. So if I lose access to the internet or whatever, I can still go to my phone and take a look at what I was supposed to do. So a plan B like that and setting it up in a place that is accessible, even if your computer is gone or your internet is gone, especially if your internet is gone. Because I, I, people, I don't think people understand how dependent we are on the internet until they lose it. Like right. there's a lot of things that you wouldn't even do if you didn't yeah. have internet. Yeah. And how painful it is. This is also why I, I'm lucky. I have, I think, I'm not actually sure if it's three other hard drives, actual hard drives on my computer. So I'm copying my files just to an, another drive, right? So thankfully, when I boot, I'll be it with, hopefully if I get into Windows, I can easily access those files. But my, my main point is, this is why having a PC, a, a laptop, or an alternative computer handy. Yeah. This crap from your phone, especially like a registry tweak on your phone, is really not fun. And if you don't have a secondary hardware, that's where my uh, my suggestion of a live USB yeah. comes in handy because you can use it on the same hardware, yeah. even if it doesn't boot on your other, um, you know, Windows installation or whatever. So you know, I, I, I see, a, a, I see a, your list of, pr of programs here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I started, yeah, I was like, wow. I, you know, it was it surprised me how much I threw in here. Um, yeah. And then I'm gonna before I actually do all this stuff, I'm gonna reorder this. I'm gonna look at them and say, what do I want right away? Um, and then I had talked to you, and I still I was doing some googling. I couldn't find a good solution yet, but um, I wanted to to have a nice tool like I used to use Ghost for taking an image. I get my stuff installed and take an image and back it up so I can revert back to it if, yes. if I want yes. to. Um, I'm still gonna try to find that out. But the, the other thing, by the way, like my things like your desktop also, those for me are all under Dropbox. So I don't have yeah. to worry about them, but man, it's something like that of like, crap, you saved it to your desktop, but that gets, that's a Windows thing. And if you don't have that backed up, you're in a world of hurt. Yeah, that's totally true. Now, Zayce, I wanted to ask you, because I don't, this is where, and I know we've talked about it, um, you and I have talked about it, but on under users, yes, right, then there's your, um, like under here, then there's your app data, is that what it is? Like there's some things, like some programs, but is that all meant to be? Yeah, this, so if you, uh, at the top on the, I don't, well, you have, oh, so there it is, app data. So if you go down, it is one of the hidden files down there after searches there. 
That's so yes, this is a very tricky location. When I was reading about it, they explain what this means and why you should use it. When you install something, they put some files on the program files folder, which is a place that is protected by the operating system. So you cannot read and write easily unless you have administrative uh, permissions. So this location here is where the applications will be saving information about themselves. Now, the roaming folder is one that if you are in, an, in a network environment, like for example, at work, if you log in, so let's say at work, you have your, your own login and every you go to each computer and you can log in with your same login. This roaming folder is gonna automatically be saved to the next computer. So if I stand up from my desk, go to another desk and log in there, whatever is in that folder gets copied automatically over the network. So this is a great place to put settings for a program because if the person moves from one computer to another, the settings of the program that they're using are gonna be shared between computers. That's what this is all about. We don't see it that often because if you're just on your desktop, you're not sharing your logging in a different machine. So you don't really see the benefit of this, right? This is really beneficial in a working environment, for example, that your, your network login is used to log into multiple computers. This goes ahead and moves. The local one though, <clears throat> that one doesn't move and it is meant for really big files. So for example, the Chrome profile here, I guess, is the one that gets to two, three, four, five gigabytes of data very easily. This is the one where they would put it, um, I think it's in G, Google, Google Chrome. <clears throat> yeah, there it is, Google. And yeah, in Chrome. If you look at those folders, they're they're usually not small. So yeah, it is a very big file. Usually this is where the program saves big databases, big files, things that cannot be moved over the, the network okay. really quickly. And then you have local low, which is also another place, which is local storage for that program but supposedly smaller than local. So I don't know why you would do the three. Most of the programs don't do the three. They kind of like choose one. So here, Oracle probably, notice that Google doesn't have a folder here. They decided, okay, we're gonna use the local folder. That's where I'm gonna put my stuff. But if they say, nah, I'm just gonna be saving some any files, I'm not gonna be saving too much data, then they might use the local low just to make sure. But in general, that's the idea about this data and a lot of settings, a lot of things that have to do with the application that you're working is in that folder. I guarantee the precursor to this folder was the program data folder, like C program data. I, I don't know if you remember that folder. If you go to the C drive. Okay. I'm gonna... Oh yeah, you want to move those. <laughs> I'm gonna copy them all. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so C. Yeah. No, and here's the other thing. I I don't want to say it's unlimited space, but I have a crazy amount of space. So to right. me, what I would love to do is say, screw it. I'm going to go copy it. And then if I later, I go to launch a program and I go, crap, I lost all my customers. It is. You could just drag, drag that in and see if what happens. Right. Now here, you see that program data folder? That's the precursor to the app data folder. Okay. This is where it was supposed to be. Notice that there's a shortcut there that takes yeah. you there. Yeah. Um, I right now, after they made that switch, it has been a mess. As you can see, there's a lot of programs that put program data here. There's other programs that put it in app data. I'm not really 100 percent sure which one you should use or why they would use this one over the other one. I will probably read a little bit more. But 99% of the time that I'm saving folders uh, uh, settings, I put them on the app data folder, not here. Because this one is also a special folder for whatever reason. Right. Um, notice that it is actually hidden as well. This, this one yeah. is not a nice folder to play with either. So I, and I will read about the program data folder to see what it is all about. But again, this is another one that you might wanna save somewhere. 
And if some things are not working exactly as you think on a program, then just move the folder that they have into it and see if that picks the issue, right? right? Because those are three locations where applications save a lot of things um, that is related to themselves. So either databases, settings, things that are, you know, saved information, you know, those kind of things, properties. Yeah. Now, now this is earlier, this is what I was saying is just as a visual reminder as I came here and looked at what was under here and under the um, 32 bit version of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but also just looking under your C drive in general, like, cause these are things that, Hey, like actually studio HK studio somewhere is in here. Yeah. Th down, down there. I see it. Yeah. So I went and grabbed, um, I grabbed the whole thing, but, um, really the projects, especially this folder is one that would have in my XML, like the XML settings. If I, you know, I would yes. grab those. Um, yeah. Cause that's how it lays it out uh, and has my right. color theme application stuff. So, but just, um, think about, you know, things that you've customized. This is where it gets tricky. If like, it's easy to forget something. This is why humans suck at remembering. This is also why I want to get Isaiah on here. It's like, it, it's easy to forget stuff, but when you start seeing a list, we can really then quickly... you go ahead and say like, oh yeah, you, you yeah, get kind right. of like triggers in your brain. Right. That exactly. as as you see something right. like I just saw there that you have like lice cap. That's a very, very old thing that I was like, that is a very amazing DLL, by the way. You can use yeah. that on, cool. on hotkey scripts to do amazing stuff. I'm um but, planning to switch over to the one Thomas mentioned. Um um it's in my list of files here. Something to GIF, image to GIF, or something to GIF. Oh, screen to GIF. GIF that yeah. one there. Yeah. GIF. Okay. It's a little more intuitive as far as using it in the GUI, but it's very similar. What What is that for? Ah, oh, for for capturing LiceCap. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It gives you a little area, and you cap. You know, but LiceCap, if I remember, it has like a hotkey that you have to. You go to start recording, and then it pops yeah, up with uh, the thing saying, "What do you want?" I'm like, "I, I wanted to record." Um, yeah. GIF has so the annoying, yeah. That's for sure. Now, um, let me share my screen for a second here. Sometime. By the way, that that one folder that the what was it? The app data? What was uh -huh, it, uh -huh. it, it? It's um, it's ninety gigs. Yes, I, I usually awesome. regularly use tree size. I don't know. Yeah. I think you got you it's you have list. yeah right. You I usually regularly no, I use tree Pinterest size. App. Okay. But it's but the same thing. It is the same thing. It just goes around, tells you yeah. where the heck is your storage gun. And then right. you figure out a lot of cache files around. I just removed like 14 gigabytes of data yesterday that yeah. were just cache files. And I was like, yeah, great. Um, but here, I have this extension called Tab Hamster. It's weird because this, this guy here, um, what it does is that I can save a group of tabs into a name like this. And I have a list here that is just a group of downloads. Now, the cool thing about this way of doing it is that I control click that and it opens a window with all the download pages. So if I don't have to really um, do much, I just go here and click download on each of them. Mm -hmm. And once it's done, I'm good to go. And I have kind of like the main programs that I usually use well, that that yeah. I have to have in the computer all the time. <laughs> what what I what I do is I have on one of my hard drives a folder called programs. And under uh, that, I have the installs of all the last versions of whatever. And so because I hate having to go find and get the download. Oh whatever. yeah, but that's the thing. Like you have the latest that you got at that time, but if they might have up updated, right. right? But um yeah. another one that does something similar to that is um it is called what is portable apps. Oh right, yeah. This little guy here, this is a yeah. gem. Um, this is for having a lot of programs without having to install them on your computer. That means that if you move your program into another folder, it's not going to break because it's not. Um, well, that's, yeah, that's, I was going to say is that the, the key word there is install. You, you put them there, right? You put them. Yeah. You, it's just files that you can get and, and that's it. Now, yeah. 
The funny thing is that they have an app. So this is the Portable Apps platform that you download this and you select all the files that you want to download and right. hit OK, and they get the latest ones and download it for you. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, and get you, of course, the portable version, not the <laughs> not the install, not, not the install, but the portable version. So if you want to take a look and, uh, at what applications you can get, it is insane. Like they have a lot of interesting things for, you know, working with graphics and pictures. That's all the programs that you can get, like Blender. That's for creating 3D animation. And you have the portable version without installing it, and it's not going to mess with your registry. Right. The same with Chrome. You can go to the Internet here section, and you can get, I think, Firefox, not Chrome. Not Firefox. Oh, yep. no, look at that. Google Chrome Portable. Cool. Yeah, so you can get all of these little things in a portable version or just get their um, main app, and then you just select all of them and click OK, and it downloads everything for you at once, which is great. I haven't used it that much. I had them to have them in a USB drive, but I have stopped using USB drives for a long time. Like I, <laughs> I, I, After we hit the terabyte, Kind of yeah. thing, like as soon as we got terabytes, yeah, I don't use. Do, do you uh, have a, a DVD or a CD drive? Like I don't even no, have. No, I don't. I yeah, don't have years, a CD. You know? Yeah, I right now my my computer has three empty bays out there that I yeah. don't use for nothing. I I bought a dual DVD, you know, Blu-ray burner, so it does like. 50 gigs, if I remember right, it's like 25 gigs and it's because it's a dual layer. So it, it doubles it. But I'm like, it's today's data is like, it's just still not nearly enough. So yeah, I, I, I don't oh, even. You see, uh, that's exactly what you mentioned. Like when you mentioned some keywords, your brain goes like, yeah, when you yep. say burner, I was using ultra ESO. It, it is kind of yeah. like, yeah, I, I think you, you know, it. it is yeah. a program that allowed you to grab anything and convert it into an ISO file. So yeah. this is the one that I was, that's another one that I was thinking of that you can create from a folder, an ISO file or a drive if you wanted to. And right. then you have an ISO file that you can, um, it's an image drive. Image drive. The only thing yeah. is that it was always, uh, you know, you had to buy it. This is one of those software that I was using it when I was a kid, and I, I paid for it. And, and, but then when when I'm now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, this this was a very good software. I would I would pay for it. How much is it? And it's it's still like reasonable, like twenty nine twenty uh, ninety uh, thirty dollars. But it's no. a one time fee. It's not it's not like a recurring fee. It's just like you buy it and that's it. You never have to deal with that again. <laughs> But it was funny, like you just mentioned Burner, and that blew into my mind. Like, yeah, I remember that one. That and Rufus, those two things together were the tools that I was using very often to create ESO files. Yeah, and and the other thing is to always remember is no matter how much work you do, there's always something you forget, right? Like, it just, But just, that's the thing. It. We do a lot of work to... Minimize, minimize the amount of things that I forget, right? So yeah, that's how it goes. And this is what we talk about a lot. Talk to somebody else. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and it helps if they're um kind of different in thought process. But on this one, it helps if they are experienced. Like often we say debugging, you can talk to someone that's not a, a programmer. This is something I would disagree. Like this is where it really helps to talk to someone who's done this a lot because um, they and we all learn. I, mean, I think most of us learn from pain. Like we all made a mistake and forgot something, and you're like, "Oh yeah, the, don't forget this and that." And you know, it, it has helped a lot with the Google Chrome and and Microsoft stuff now moving settings into the cloud. That that really makes it it's much helping. Simpler. Yeah, it's, and it, actually, I, I'm I'm very surprised. Like you see that your taskbar settings. If you selected like. Um, small icons, remove this, remove that. All of that, there is a setting on your Windows settings that says save your settings to the cloud. And when you reinstall Windows, it just applies them back without you having to click a thing. That's great. Um, but on the other hand, it doesn't matter how much you do it. Like you're going to forget something, as you mentioned. 
So by the way, here, and I know I've talked to this about this before. So these are my shortcuts to launch programs, and these are to drives, uh, directories, and folders. All of this and this are under Dropbox also. So yeah. I don't have to worry. Now, this one, because it's installed programs, I did go through and go, oh, yeah, I need DaVinci Resolve. You know, I need my hand, I need certain programs, right? So I use this as a cheat sheet. Um, this one, I don't care at all about because they're all shortcuts to folders that are under Dropbox. So right. I'm like, I don't have to look at it at all but boy if you if you're linking to other things um it, it's a good way to because i don't have to go create this like when i just need to go open and the new install for windows 11 and that's part of this also is just to say hey what can you borrow and keep and then just import and not have to set up from scratch yeah that's, stuff first, yeah. But that's where having a um, portable version of your app is great because you don't have to install you don't have to remember oh i installed it in this folder now everything breaks if you use a portable version it's just move it around that's it it doesn't really matter yeah all right well thanks man um wish me luck <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna hear you saying like now the computer is not booting again <laughs> right yeah, I, I anticipate loads of fun, but yeah, we'll see. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.